I'm Alvin Singh. Um, I am originally from Nashville, Tennessee, but I currently live in South Johannesburg, South Africa. And uh, when I was here at the digital media program here in UW, I took a course with Anita that really helped me put a lot of things in perspective where things are going in emerging markets. My wife is from South Africa, and so a lot of the work that she does deals with agriculture and how farmers are uh, growing around the continent doing different things and selling their crops. And so uh, I've traveled many times to Africa and the Caribbean and South America, but right now currently South Africa is our home. And one of the things that um, I think uh, is interesting is that <laughs> we, we brought my two-year-old daughter there and she loves completely. She's born here in Seattle, but she's loving the fact that she can see the real animals that she sees on TV or in her coloring, uh, coloring books. And the elephants are actually more friendly than we think. Um, while there in South Africa, I do a lot of journalism work for newspapers here in Tennessee. And uh, I notice how a lot of the journalism is, is changing around the continent. And you, when you visit there, you see a lot of posters that have the headlines of the day. Um, every day they change them and it's a real big thing for people to sort of know what to expect and you know, to purchase their newspapers. Um, but I see the growth of mobile phones is making the news consumption more, it's more engaging and more interactive. Uh, as we saw earlier, some of the newspapers write the responses and comments that they have from SMS or Facebook or Twitter, actually. Um, being that South Africa itself is the second largest mobile subscribers with next to China, uh, I can just imagine where it's going in the next few years. Uh, another thing is the, the magazine, thank you, is the new business models where um, they, have, they still have a lot of big newspapers that's like super large, but they also have this magazine that just came there where I can pass it around. And what it is, it's a bite size of news throughout the week. And the editor says that you know, people who are on the move and professionals uh, who don't have time to read a lot of the arguments, I mean uh, articles. And so this is an interesting publication where it's, it's working on the, uh, with language in Afrikaans, English, and uh, Zulu, I think. Uh, oops, sorry. And it's not surprising that that magazine came, me being that 100 newspapers are printed every day in Johannesburg. So in um, 11 to 12 different languages, you see the newspapers are piling up, but they're still relevant there. Uh, one of the missions that I was able to have access was when the First Lady Michelle Obama came to South Africa in June. And she brought her and her daughters and the grandmother. And the whole trip was to, uh, for her, it was a keynote speaker at a youth women's forum, Young African Women's Forum, which was 72 young girls from around the continent whose you know, goals were to be the next leaders of Africa because there's a big push for young, empowering young women throughout the continent through education and through uh, micro-entrepreneurship. And so in her speech, you know, she, of course, this was a White House initiative that started with here in the United States uh, last year. And this is sort of the follow-up to that forum. And while she was there, it was a lot of uh, press following them and visiting a lot of the historical sites in the city. And I had the opportunity to interview some of the young people that was there too, um, that was standing I'm outside. To the back. Yeah. Let's see, let's do it. Oops. That one. Talk, then we're going to take back home and then tell them to our younger ones and stuff so that they can become leaders. Because like what you see today happening is that most of the girls are, are like discouraged as to like getting into leadership because like most of the situations that we have in the townships and stuff like that, they're not really supported by people. So yeah, taking this back is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to take talk with them and actually inspire most of them. Yeah. If you have something to say? To, yeah. you know, Barack Obama, what would you want to say to him? Yeah. To Barack Obama. I would say that uh, next time he must come to South Africa with his wife, not uh, leaving his wife to come here in South Africa alone. Because, hey, 
Here in South Africa, there are many handsome guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the 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 you know the buzz was there for her coming to the country. Many people were happy um, to see them. Um, and while I was there, I, I met a guy by the name of Alf Kumalo. Alf Kumalo is is famously known as one of the top photographers out of South Africa. He has been documenting the Mandela family for over 50 years. Uh, before Mandela went to prison, during the trial, and when he came out, and uh, anyone and everybody, you can imagine. He told me he has like 4,000 pictures of just Muhammad Ali uh, that he's never really published. Here he is taking a picture of Robert Kennedy uh, in his visit at Soweto in 1968. Uh, and then he's got magazine covers that are uh, well known around uh, South Africa. And oh, I keep doing it. Um, another person that I sort of I've been working under as a as sort of a mentor is a guy by the name of Greg Marinovich, who is one of the surviving. There's a movie called The Bang Bang Club that just came out this year, uh, and I suggest you to take a good look at it. It's really good storytelling in it, and uh, it's a story of two out of the four photographers were Pulitzer Prize winners. Um, Greg is still surviving today, and what he does is a lot of storytelling uh, across the continent. And here is a short of some of the projects that he's working on now. That he's this one. Uh, he's going to explain a little bit. It's about white chairs, uh, plastic white chairs that you see commonly around Africa, uh, and he's picked the sort of theme behind. It. Neighborhood. And this is again traveling with Mr. Luke, sleeping in the car with his dog. These are people being evicted. Yeah, I couldn't quite make up my mind, so I gave you both. Friends, backyard. Farm chair. Rosebank on Oxford Road. <laughs> Old age home in Newcastle. Curious. Sometimes you have to include other chairs just for diversity, right? And that's Chatsworth. And right, another project that he's wanting he's asked me to kind of help him uh, document is the previous ANC freedom fighters and where they are in post-apartheid today. Um, the country is still dealing with 25 percent unemployment and uh, it's, you know, in a culture where mining kind of rules everything, uh, they're trying to adapt to find new job opportunities for people in the country because for so long they've counted on, you know, mining and diamonds and gold and platinum that now there's an opportunity for people who were veterans um, in South Africa to now do something. Where this short that he's doing is uh, one of the freedom fighters passed away, and this is some of the ph photography that he's taken in storytelling. So what it fascinates me is someone like that, how do they get into these situations and, and are trusted from people? Because, you know, he's the outsider to that community. Uh, and he basically said, you have to be lucky. Uh, and he's been, of course, doing it for so many years that many people know him in these communities. Uh, and this is where I think now it gets interesting where we have storytellers like those two 
uh, who have been doing things from you know taking pictures and negatives and actual historical events to now being the mobile uh, generation, where is this going to take? And I think a lot of it is going to be adapted by entrepreneurs as the market changes. As more uh, demand for content comes into play, people are going to look for more opportunities to provide it. Uh, and then for the first time in 60 years, Coca-Cola has been the dominating brand from 16 to 25 years as, as far as recognition. Uh, and now this year, BlackBerry has taken that. Uh, and everyone is quick is to say, in South, Africa? in South Africa, this is for their uh, markets. And everyone says BBMB, which is, you know, BlackBerry short messaging. Mm -hmm. And when it, the blackout recently just happened, everyone was <laughs> really mm -hmm. debating for two hours whether they should go to iPhone. It was almost like three <laughs> days of no BlackBerry and BBMing and things like that. And people were actually <laughs> felt blacked out. And it was a, uh, cause you know, a lot of media and government and everyone has it to the teenagers. Um, you'll see advertising like this, SMS and your name. Uh, this is for the Rugby World Cup. And the youth are using an application called Mixit, which is sort of like Twitter times 20. Um, I mean, there's no clear sentences in this. It's just short messaging towards each other. And the UNICEF has just done a research and they found that 30% of the users uh, are using it after school and not doing their homework, where it's a high usage of it that 75% are talking to strangers at least once a week. Uh, and they want to curve that to more using it for educational purposes and development and not uh, idle uh, use of tools that can be actually be more helpful for them. Uh, so it's interesting, that just came out a few weeks ago, this report. Uh, and the, what I think are the next big things there uh, and, and all across is government starting to open up debate on how they should carry their social media policies in the country. Uh, we see a lot of recently the uprisings where people were using all of these different websites and YouTube and mobile phones and Facebook to organize. And I don't think that shutting them off is the answer to the question. I think uh, especially when you're dealing with the second largest people have the tool. There's no more of the people don't have it so you don't have to worry about it. Now everyone does have it. They don't have an internet in the house, but they may have the mobile phone to still engage. Uh, mobile banking is going to be big, more uses of that, and uh, just new business models coming out of there as well for entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.